took life from my own brothers and sisters right here on this continent. And all this death, just so I could kill you. <laughs> Ah, Killmonger. The man with a name so edgy, you'd think he's an honorary member of an early 2000s emo band. His character in Black Panther is one we should probably dub an anti-villain. Because let's face it, this guy isn't just another run-of-the-mill evildoer with a bad hair day. Born Eric Stevens, but reborn as Killmonger, this walking dichotomy is Oakland and Wakanda, all rolled into one glaring critique of social justice. Firstly, why is Killmonger so angry? Oh, maybe it's because Wakanda, the Disneyland of technological wonders and magical herbs, couldn't be bothered to share its advancements with the African diaspora. Honestly, it's like having a cure for baldness and not telling your receding friend about it. Talk about bad manners. Now, Killmonger doesn't just want Wakanda's throne to jazz up his LinkedIn profile. Oh no, he has some major societal reforms in mind. He wants to arm the oppressed people of the world with Wakandan tech. Yep, he's basically Robin Hood with better hair and six-pack abs. Like an extreme Kickstarter campaign, he's out to redistribute wealth, but with missiles. You might say, wait, that sounds great, where's the villainy? Ah, therein lies the rub. His ideology may have struck a chord, but his methods are a hot mess of ethical landmines. The man's got plans within plans, wheels within wheels, like a Rubik's Cube of moral ambiguity. You solve one side and mess up the other. Killmonger's passionate about his cause, but that passion is like a Molotov cocktail. Effective, but destructive. The way he went about executing his coup, less than kosher. In his pursuit of equity, he kind of forgot about the part where you don't indiscriminately kill people. His strategy isn't sugar, spice, and everything nice. No, it's more like rage, retribution, and a touch of annihilation. When the man decides to wage a war for liberation, he really leans into the war part. But let's step back. Why are we all so quick to label him a villain? Is it because he forced us to face the reality of centuries-long systemic oppression? Or maybe it's the way he calls out Wakanda for its selective altruism. He's not just rebelling against T'Challa. He's rebelling against an entire global system that perpetuates inequality. So, who's the real villain here? Killmonger, who seeks to tear down an unjust world? Or society itself, which built that world and simply asked him to live in it? Honestly, we'd need a whole new video series just to unpack that one. If you're still convinced that Killmonger's just a bad guy, maybe you should dig a little deeper. This isn't just a villain. This is a wake-up call wrapped in dreadlocks and scars. A man who's complicated, but aren't we all? And let's not forget the sheer audacity of the man. He walks into Wakanda, a stranger in what should have been his home, challenges its king to a duel, and wins. Who does that? That's like walking into Buckingham Palace and demanding tea with the queen and then becoming the queen. The audacity, the courage, the sheer gall of it all makes you rethink your life choices, doesn't it? Divide and conquer the land as they did. No, I learned from my enemies. Beat them at their own game. You have become them. You will destroy the world, Wakanda included. The world took everything away from me.